Good evening, folks. This is Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, bringing you a grand solar minimum update on Friday, April 20th, 1049 p.m. Mountain Time, 2018. You're looking at the currently erupting Mount Ayo, Ayoyama in Kyushu Prefecture, associated with Kirishima. You can see the venting is continuing to uh, happen at a very vigorous rate as we speak. We'll come back to this, but let's get on with the update. Record cold this April for millions. Storms move into the Southwest and Hawaii this weekend. Take a look. Freeze and frost advisories throughout the uh, mid-Atlantic here up into Allentown, as far south as Raleigh, at Asheville, Bristol, Lexington, Cincinnati. Take a look where you are. Cover up your crops. Here are the forecast highs for Monday. It's looking much warmer for out throughout the nation, except for Billings and the Southern Appalachian, still just hovering just above freezing in those regions. Record-breaking cold so far for April 2018, mid-Michigan, ever since, ever since the official start of spring began back in March. You may have noticed conditions outside don't look or feel very spring-like. As a matter of fact... It has been the coldest April we've experienced in more than 60 years for both Saginaw and Flint. As of Thursday, the average temperature for April 2018 in Saginaw is 34.1 degrees, and for Flint, 34.7 degrees. That beats the record for the coldest April in Saginaw of 37.9 by over 3 degrees set back in 1950, and Flint of 39 degrees by over 5 degrees set back in 1950. This makes April 2018, as of Thursday, April 19th, the coldest April in both Saginaw and Flint since records started to be recorded, with Saginaw going back to 1912 and Flint back to 1921. Still 11 days left in the month. Let's come over to the Weather Ready Nation map. Potential for severe weather and heavy rain in the south this weekend. A low-pressure system moving across the southern Gulf States will bring the threat of isolated severe thunderstorms containing hail and damaging winds this weekend. Fire weather threats remain elevated for portions of West Texas. We're going to check the GFS models for snow. Here we are. So this is where we sit today. As we move into Saturday, snow is going to continue to fall through the Rocky Mountains. Heaviest, heavy, heaviest up in the northern mountains here. And going to continue into Saturday evening. There's going to be some snow in British Columbia and Oregon. And then here on Monday, snow moves through Montana and Wyoming. By Wednesday, you'll see snow moving across Canada here and into the northeast for your weekend. To end the weekend, it's looking like as you head into May... New York State is going to get a snow event here, pretty significant, as well as Canada. And we might be on tap again here in Colorado. So the Midwest is, the snow pattern has ended, thankfully, so the planting may occur. Here are the low temperatures. I was worried about this little, look at the blue zone here. So still going to be cold out till April 28th. Probably no, they won't be planting before then. And then the pattern breaks here at the end of the month. And it seems to warm up here in the Midwest for the first week of May. This is far out, and we still have to deal with this cold plume right here, which is going to last until the end of the month. So the first week of May is looking good for planting. Not all may be lost, but stay with us. Let's check out the albedo map. All this snow is not going to be lost for months and months and months, and none of this ice. Hudson Bay still completely frozen, above 45, almost entire, 45 north, almost all snow and ice covered. In past the middle of April, almost in May. We're almost in May, guys. Over here, it's acting a little bit more normal. There's no snow in Europe in these portions, but in the U.S., whew, Different story. Check this out. I just got a satellite image of the North Pole. It's right here in the middle. That's where we are. We're currently on the North Pole. That's pretty significant. Here's the North. <laughs> Here's the Northern Passage. No one is going through there. And when it does melt out, they're going to get stuck here because there's uh, 500 more miles of 
No passage. Look at the ice coverage here that you're not being told about. Those people that think that the Arctic is melting or it's cold up here, this is Greenland. This is Alaska. The entire Arctic. You could walk from this South China to Nebraska. <laughs> I'll leave you links to that. Violent hail hailstorm damages more than 700 homes in Meghalaya. Look at the depth of that. It looks like snow. Hundreds of homes were damaged in Janita Hills District of Meghalaya State in India on the 15th. Local media reports 700 houses damaged in Changpeng alone. And definitely crop losses. You can't have anything growing in that. Update on the Rhea Fire in Oklahoma. Current fire situation. The fire is currently almost 300,000 acres and 25% contained. It's not over. Thursday's reconnaissance flight provided precise perimeter data to incidents mapping specialists, allowing them to calculate the acreage more accurately. The increase of 5,983 acres is due to the growth that occurred Wednesday. Those winds, fire behavior and growth was minimal Thursday. That's good news. I'll leave you links to the entire report. Seismic update, no quakes of note at all. Basically, quiesce in here. We do have a 5.1 in Burma, and they're reporting some damage. So heads up there. We also have a 5.0 here north of New Zealand, but nothing else significant. Apocalypse coming soon. Scientists fear Japan's supervolcano might kill 100 million trigger, trigger volcanic winter. Scientists predict that it could also cause a tsunami that would strike southern Japan, Taiwan, China, and the North and South America. Look at that. Scientists fear that the underwater supervolcano off the coast of Japan that erupted 7,300 years ago is preparing to make a comeback. We'll check out the science in a second. Experts worry that if it does, it might end up killing almost 100 million people. They discovered a giant dome of lava in the Kikai Volcano Collapse Magma Chamber and believe it to contain 32 cubic kilometers, 7.68 cubic miles of magma, and distortions on its surface suggest that the dome is growing. The lava dome is within the mo mostly submerged Kikai Caldera south of Kyushu Island. We'll take a look at where that is. Quickly, let's come over here to the wiki. <coughs> here you can see the location of Kikai Caldera. A massive, mostly submerged caldera up to 19 kilometers in diameter in the Osumi Islands of Kagoshima Prefecture in Japan. It's the remains of an ancient eruption of a gigantic VEI-8, VEI-7, and its geographic coordinates are so on and so forth. Come over here to Science Alert. There's absolutely a massive lava dome lurking underneath Japan. Here's what that means. An ancient underwater volcano responsible for one of the largest known super eruptions in modern in history, recorded history, looks to be busy making a silent, fiery preparations for its inevitable return. Now, the Kikai Caldera, located to the south of Japan's main islands, devastated a large swath of Japanese archipelago when it spewed upwards of 500 cubic kilometers. 120 cubic miles of magma during the Akahoya eruption 7,000 years ago. That's the 7,300 year ago event we were just talking about. Scientists have just confirmed the evidence of new volcanic activity. Now, the research at Kobe University, which I'm going to supply you the paper with here, giant rhyolite lava dome formation after 7.3 kilo year super eruption at Kikai Caldera, southwest Japan, that's by Tatsumi, very recent paper, 2018. Now, the researchers suggest uh, that they've detected a lava dome that exists below the Kikai Caldera holding a volume of 32 cubic kilometers, which is 8 cubic miles, which is one-tenth of the super eruption in past history. So this amount of lava is not a super eruptive amount. And so don't let the fear mongers get your goat. This could erupt in a significant way, VEI 5, 4 or 5, but not in the way that it did in the past and 7,300 years ago. So I'll leave you links to all this. You do your own homework and make your own conclusion. 
volcanoes worldwide today. Sinabong, Sakodojima, Ibiko, as well as Ioyama. Heavily venting. Let's skip it forward here. Let's get some live coverage for you guys. <coughs> Top left, Sakurajima. Top right, Shinmodake. Completely quiet at Shinmo. Sakurajima has been outgassing that volcanic ash for three weeks now. Aoyama just awakening, but still heavy outgassing. This is live over at Volcano YT. I'll leave you links to it if you want to watch. Fear is a liar though, folks, but it is entertaining. Now let's talk about another liar. The weather underground in NOAA, March 2018, coming out today, Earth's fifth warmest March on record, which is why yesterday I put out the data so you were well informed of what they were about to show you, and it's the fraudulent map. Take a look at how hot it is across the world in March. Whew. Let's look at the real data. There it is. They also have the real data on their website. They're just not showing it to you in this article on Weather Underground. Here is the real data. Now let's pick it apart. Do you see this blue zone right here? Oh dear. Let's get there again. This blue spot here in the northern U.S. is 4 degrees C below normal. And according to this paper, it is in the white zone which is near average, not the record coldest, which it currently is in April, record cold throughout the Great Lakes. It's not much colder than average. It's not even cooler than average. So five, four degrees C below normal, according to the same people that made this map, is near average. It's not even cooler than average. I think that 4 degrees C below average is not only cooler than average, it's much cooler than average, which is this color, which basically doesn't exist on the map. So let's take a look at the map here. Up in Siberia, we have the coldest on the entire legend here. Minus 5 degrees C, colder than normal, for thousands of square miles. And according to this, <laughs> eh, it's a little cooler than average. The jig is up. The ruse is on. Over 50% of this map is blue, which is colder than zero. The majority is extremely blue, which is extremely cold. If you do the map on this map, if you do the math on this map, it is not what they just showed you. Spaceweathernews.com. Let's take a look. There's the coronal hole that gave us trouble turning away. And we have a pretty fancy active spot here. Let's take a look. Look at this active region here turning around the limb here. Leah says that she uh, is worried about that spot. So, woman's intuition. We'll see what happens. But let's come over and see the data. Already kicking off some beef flares from that spot, that region. Uh, and it started to fall off, but it's coming back up active in B range. So we're going to keep a quick eye on that. And we were in geomagnetic storm. I posted that earlier on solar shutdown here. Went up to K6 here for 12, uh, 6 hours. K5 for 3 hours, uh, just 12 hours ago. And we're dropping down into quiescence. So nothing else to worry about as far as the geomagnetic storm, which did last uh, for 12 hours total over a 18, 24-hour period there. There is no aurora uptick tonight. Those of you who sent me pictures from last night, thank you. But just minor aurora activity. As the sun goes back to sleep, there's all that activity, and it's all over, folks. Nothing to worry about there. Let's talk about the Lyrids peaking Saturday night, Sunday morning. So if you're out about 3 a.m., 4 a.m., and you look to the northeast, you'll see Hercules, Draco. You'll see uh, Lyra, Cygnus, Libra. 
and the Radiant is here out of Lyra and Hercules. So you'll see these 20 meteorites an hour shooting out here, and about one out of every four has a persistent plasma tail, probably green. So get out there. The moon is nothing but a sliver, and it will set before the best viewing time. So I'll leave you links to this if you want to check out the Lyrids. 2,600-year-old historical, the oldest, most historic meteor shower continuously viewed by humanity. And that's a boom. Guys, I hope you got something out of the video. Times are changing. Be safe.